So, Christina, as uh, we are two moms with little ones, uh, my oldest is in second grade. So she's in full-time school, public oh. school, and it just... That's so great. It feels great. It feels great. You're like, wow, that's so Freedom. nice. Our second will go to kindergarten next year. And then Charles, he has two more years. So then, so I feel like we're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel of just kids being in full-time school. That's you know, Five so days great. a week, which is great. Uh, but we've been in that season for seven years now of me working kind of on and off, depending on the, the season um, and, and how much travel I have. And you being a working mom now, you know, when you have little ones at home, there has to be someone there if you don't have a spouse that is staying home. And so for a lot of dual income families, which is a majority of Americans, a lot of Americans are a dual income family, you're having to look at options for childcare. And it is so expensive. We feel the pain of looking at the budget and knowing what it costs. And it's a real factor. And already people the margins are so slim in life, you know, because of inflation and everything we're dealing with in the economy, but also just the reality of the stats that we know of the personal finance state of a lot of people in this country of just living paycheck to paycheck with consumer debt, with wages not going as high as they were expecting. I mean, like, you know, you, you bundle it all together and it can feel very stressful. And you've pulled some stats, Christina, from this week of, yeah. of, some, of a survey, uh, a study that came out from care.com. Yeah, there's the 2022 cost of care survey. It reveals that the cost of childcare is higher for families in 2022. 51% of parents say they spend more than 20% of their household income on childcare. And 72% of parents report spending 10% or more. And they also say that the quality of childcare continues to be tough for parents to find. In fact, 43% of parents say it's harder to find ch childcare over the past year since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And parents continue to struggle to pay for childcare. 59% are more concerned about childcare costs now than a year prior, which is driving significant changes such as taking a second job, reducing hours at work, changing jobs, and leaving the workforce entirely. So it's such an important thing to talk about because I think a lot of people feel like they're struggling in this alone. They feel kind of overwhelmed and just kind of trying to trudge through it. But I mean, obviously we want to give hope and encouragement. We've been there. I mean, for our family personally, I have a one and four year old. We've tried so many different forms of childcare from parents day out programs to full-time childcare to um, having a nanny. It's like, it's a lot to kind of process. And I think it's so important to just bring these conversations to light because in my field, I've been talking about college for years and paying for college. And I see so many families stressing out about paying for college. And it's crazy to see the studies. The average cost of childcare per year for preschool is similar to the cost of in-state tuition at a public university. Yeah, which is wild. It's okay, wild. What's the average public university right now tuition? It's just so under ten thousand. Just under ten thousand a year, and that's what we're seeing with childcare yeah. <laughs> happening. Which is yeah. So if you're feeling that pull, that's a real pull. Like if you're yes. feeling that stress and that anxiety, that that is a real thing to talk about and discuss and to be super strategic and intentional with. That's right. And just like anything else in the budget, uh, looking to see, okay, what, uh, what are the, where are the ways that we can cut if we can, what are the different options out there that we may have to plug into different than we had to three, four years ago, you know, because life has changed and depending on your job, uh, your financial situation, you know, this may be an area in your budget where you say, okay, what if we look at some different options? Um, that actually may be able to save us what we're paying now, uh, which possibly could help. So there's a lot of different options out there Yeah. for families. Yeah, there's a lot of different options. I was telling Rachel on the break that even as an entrepreneur for so many years before I came to Ramsey, my husband and I tried some non-traditional options. For example, I would wake up for a season at 4 a.m. and work till 9 and that you know, until my son woke up and then my husband got off at three and he would take him and then I'd go back to work. Yeah. And I know it wasn't ideal, but it saved us a lot of money and it allowed us to have a lot of time with our son, which was great and what we wanted in that season of life. And then we've tried full-time care at other times. So it's, it is definitely situation dependent. And I think it's good to kind of explore different options. Some people have family nearby. Some yeah. people have, you know, friends that maybe do a nanny share. There's just so many different options versus immediately signing up for that expensive daycare that's like around the yeah. block from you. For sure. For sure. Yeah. The nanny share thing is huge. I know a few friends that do this and it is helpful if you're able yeah. to split because you're able to do go a third, 
right, of the cost of what you would normally pay if you can get two other families with you, if it is something like that. Um, and sometimes it's more convenient. Like for yes. for some people, you know, they're looking at a 15, 20 minute commute to put their kid in a certain program versus a nanny share might be with your neighbors where all you have to do is like walk across the street to take your child to share the nanny with, yes. you know, your neighbors across the street. Yep. And then there gets to be a point too, Christine, we've talked to women on the show too, that after paying for childcare or even the commute from where they're working, if they're working outside the home to somewhere else, to this, to this, that they just say, gosh, legit, it just, it's easier for me just to go part-time and that I work two days a week and take that cut because of what we're saving in childcare and in compute and gas, all of it. So it's just, it is so dependent per family situations and everything, but, um, but it is, it's a huge part of people's budget and our part of our, both of our budgets <laughs> okay. that we see when it comes to, uh, being a mom and working. And so, um, yeah. It, it can be stressful. Yeah. And then also it's just important for people to explore different options that can like help with those costs. Some employers now are offering benefits for childcare. And so that could be a good conversation if you're looking into a new job. If you have a job and your benefits are pretty generous, you know, see if that's available. And if it's not, are they willing to negotiate that into your package? Because I mean, every little bit helps. If you can get an extra five to $10,000 a year to help with that, then that's amazing. And also talk to your HR department. Some employers offer dependent care accounts, mm -hmm. which then you can pay for your daycare and pre-tax dollars, which is obviously going to be a great savings. So just being really intentional to see what options are out there, you know, what could possibly, you know, what am I not thinking about? Are there any options outside of the box that could really make our lives easier and help our budgets? Yeah, for sure. And just to remember too, that, you know, everything is a season. Everything yes. is a season. And that's, you know, these costs aren't, unless you move to like private school and you're going to be paying for education at that point or something, uh, kids are expensive. But if you, if you're looking at it, or at least I am, I'm like, okay, you know, in my head, the amount of years that they're, that they're home and the days I'm working when I need help versus when they're going to be full time in school, right? Like that, that's a season. So it's not going to be that forever expense, that daycare, uh, even though that expense can move to, if you pay for right. a private school, <laughs> elementary school or something, uh, but, and also, again, I've had friends that they're like, yeah, the pulling back thing is, is a real thing just to say, you know, maybe it's childcare expense and other things uh, where they say, okay, for a season for this two years, I'm going to do this a little differently just to kind of ease the burden of that, of that bill that, and financially we're going to cut the budget or people that say, Hey, we're going all in and our, and we're just going to have a tighter budget uh, during the season of having to put our kids in childcare, knowing that that's going to relieve, you know, have a little bit of relief here in the next few years. Yeah, I mean, for this season, I have a full-time stay-at-home dad husband, which is the right season for us right now. And like I've said, we've been through, it feels like all the different options, options at this yes. point. And for this season, that's what's right for us. That's right. And yeah, we're owning it. Yeah, and, and I think too, you know, the, the key word here is options. It's options. Don't just feel like you're stuck in one thing. Explore, ask people, look at different you know availabilities, whether it's a nanny share or even a different daycare, anything to kind of whew, give margin to the budget. If it's needed, uh, there are options out there, but it can be tough for sure.